All right, hopefully this will clarify what I'm talking about and why I'm messing with a balanced valve that's mostly external to the block. So this, see this is threaded right here. Oh, wrong side. This is threaded. There's a valve seat in there. Hopefully I can get some light in there. But anyway, this threads into this. And here's the valve stem. Let me just uh, get these springs out of the way. And this might be a good explanation of a balanced valve just in general. But this is a sealed container. This is the balance chamber. And I've done I've done builds with these before. Like I had a big balance valve in the nine millimeter pistol. Um, the spool valves, you know, with all those gadgets I made and the 50 cal pistol, those are all technically balanced valves, but often referred to as spool valves. But in any event, there's an O-ring on the front of the poppet, and that goes into this balance chamber. And as you can see, it's sealed. So the pressure um, is generally calculated by the diameter of the poppet times, you know, so radius times radius times pi times the pressure, and that's your seating force on the poppet. In this situation, that seating force is also applied in a forward fashion on this O-ring. So with this being a quarter inch, it would be 0.125 times 0.125 uh, times pi times pressure. And that offsets the seating force in this direction. So yin and yang, it's being pulled off the seat even before the hammer strikes it. Now normally you have what they call a vent, you know, going from the front somewhere um, down to the base of the seat of the poppet so that when it fires, there's a high pressure area on the transfer port right around here and it goes back in to refill or to equalize or to reseat the poppet so that balance chamber gets a, a spike in pressure real quick so that the poppet comes back. In this situation, although people say it doesn't work, it does, in this situation this is not vented um, but it's got sufficient spring and a small enough plenum where it naturally wants to return to its home position. This goes on here. So we've actually got uh, two little springs. One's in the balance chamber and one's on the stem itself. And this whole assembly screws in to here. Now you might be saying, well why is the, the, the pop itself all well, metal? You know, usually mine are black or white plastic. And the reason is, I wish I could get a better shot of it. Um, let me just pick you up real quick. The reason is, as you can see, there's a nylon seat in the base of the valve. Now, how that nylon seat seals is uh, it's somewhat hit or miss, actually. Um, the way it's done in this configuration right now is not only is it press fit in, and when you press fit nylon into, you know, especially a softer nylon into uh, a fixed fixed area of metal. In other words, you know, you have a 500 diameter metal hole and you press a 505 piece of nylon in there. You get a pretty good seal, but it's, it's really hit or miss. This one underneath it actually had hot glue on it and was then pressed in, then sat, um, and now it seals perfectly. You know, I had it up to 4,000 PSI earlier. And you may wonder, well, why go through all this trouble just to uh, just to reduce the cracking pressure of the poppet? Because that's all it really is, is that you know, you're adding a system that's pulling the poppet off the seat. While really you want the poppet to, seat, to seal, um, but you also want to get that, that cracking force down. And generally the reason is, um, you, you know, if you have a balanced valve, it requires less hammer. And less hammer is a good thing for multiple reasons. Number one, you know, you don't have to exert a lot of effort to cock the gun. So a lot of, a almost all the AEA big bores now use uh, balanced valves. Everything 357 and up pretty much has a balanced valve, except for the, uh, the really older Challengers. Um, the Zeus, of course, has a balanced valve. Um, a lot of other guns, FX uses a balanced valve. There's a bunch out there. Um, which, you know, 
this isn't designed for big bore, so you may wonder why balance the valve on a small bore. You know, this is way too small, you know, functionally, dimension wise, to flow enough air for a big bore. And the reason is semi automatic. And that's where the balance valve comes in really handy. My last semi automatic build, I needed a ton of hammer pressure to get the poppet dwell or the, the valve dwell enough to not only feed the recoil system but to also fire the projectile. If you had a balanced valve in theory you could get respectable numbers muzzle velocity while also you know using only a tiny amount to cycle the hammer system. Um, so you'd have a, just a much uh, smoother and easier action to work around if you had a balanced valve uh, you know, doing both of the systems as opposed to my, you know, my semi-automatic, you know, it was incredibly hard to cock the gun, um, you know, in order to get enough pressure to get the 30 cal round balls moving. And the bigger you go, the more this becomes apparent. Um, and then because of that, it's, it's, it's a cycle because of that, because of that additional force needed to fire the gun at a, at a decent velocity, uh, it also requires more air pressure to recharge the hammer, to fire the hammer backwards. So it's like a never-ending cycle of needing more air to perform, to perform the functions if you're going with a traditional paintball, paintball style valve blowback system. Now if you go with a shrouded system like AEA for the uh, you know for the earlier models where the shroud and the piston are doing the blowback like the um, like the hats and V-locks, which I still have, um, even that uses a combination system. Um, but if you're using the hammer system where the air is directly firing on the hammer from the valve, it's just far easier to have a balanced valve. So this, while this system, this block might just turn into a single shot pistol, um, the idea is to, you know, do some research and testing to see you know how it would all pan out with a balanced valve semi-automatic system um, the only guns I can think of like that I mean the new AEA you know 12 shot uh, shotgun type thing I forget what it's called like the Z72 or something that's a semi-automatic uh, balanced valve um, Cuban and all that they're a different type of valve entirely the Cuban the uh, what is it, the Whirlwind or whatever, the $3,000, 357 some other Sidewinder, those are all the Cuban type of uh, valves, so that's a different story entirely. And the only person I could think of, or the only company I could think of that's using a semi-automatic system in conjunction with a balanced valve is AEA, and I haven't had my hands on it, so I really don't know, you know, the exact uh, specs and exactly how it works. But, like I said, this is a prototype for research purposes, and I hope <coughs> maybe it offered some insight as to how and why things work. So, you know, the biggest advantage is, you know, less cocking effort. It takes less force to get the valve off the seat or to get the poppet off the seat. So you can get higher numbers with less hammer energy. Quite the opposite of my last, you know, post epoch build where huge hammer energy and a lot of power. Um, and then as it applies to um, as it applies to semi-automatic you could have a more efficient semi-automatic system in theory that's uh, you know just far easier to work with but anyway that's my rant for now more to come at some other time thanks for watching